Hey, everybody. Uh, oh. You guys hear me uh, out there on Zoom? Oh, I, yeah. you guys are, I can't, we can't hear you, so. I it's can't. a party. Yep, we can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Um, all right. Um, so I'd like to start off with saying that I have had uh, seizure auras for uh, pretty much the entire week. I haven't had a seizure yet. Um, usually with seizure auras, I get uh, pretty uh, that work discombobulated work. Um, so uh, please bear with me from there. Um, also, the people in the room, it is pretty important uh, that you use the microphones. Uh, otherwise, uh, it just won't pick up uh, uh, for recording uh, or for people out uh, in Zoom. Um, so please, if you guys have something to say, raise your hand so you can get the microphone to you. Um, so, uh, announcements. Does anybody have any announcements? Uh, I think Rick said there was, uh, that, that he didn't have any, but, uh, Max, you should have any. Do you have any? Max, anything? No, I don't have anything set up right now. Uh, we okay. had a good outing last weekend down at Wallace Marine Park. Max is um, muted. No, he's not muted. I no. can't hear Max. Scott, you can hear me, can't you? Yeah, well, some hear me and some don't. Oh, but, okay, uh, I got you. Yeah, now. I hear you. There we go. Uh, I'm waiting for a little better weather to do a uh, downtown evening shoot, but we did Wallace Marine Park last weekend. That was a lot of fun. I'm thinking about uh, just doing a quick drop in at the uh, Saturday market, uh, maybe a week or two from now, just to get our people skills going again. It's always fun and it's quick and easy to do, but we're having a good time. Sounds good. Thank you. Pardon me, I didn't. I didn't hear you, Mark. Saturday market shoot on what day? Well, I haven't got it scheduled yet, but it would be on a Saturday, uh, <laughs> uh, probably in a couple of weeks. I'll get it up. It's, um, I was for a Sunday shoot, so I get the can't go to that one. <laughs> uh, got it. Is it there, Rick? Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Did anybody else? No? Okay, cool. Um, uh, so, so, uh, there, right now, sorry about that. So, what I want to do is start off with uh, going over a few examples of what a uh, tiny planet is, which means I need to share my screen here. Okay. Can everybody see that? Can see it. So, um, it's Matt. <laughs> That's all. Okay, there we go. So this is a version of uh, uh, what we're going to uh, work on. Going to be working on today. It's not the exact one, but it's just the same photos. Uh, you shouldn't be the here is, uh, the same thing, a uh, different version. I uh, just having some fun. I took a photo from a different day and threw it in there. Uh, the photo of me taken out my uh, yard. You can see that uh, the light different doesn't quite match. So it's not a really good composition. My this secret is another one on a different day. Uh, uh, this one here at uh, at uh, Cascade Park in Boulder Worth. Uh, next, yeah, this one is at uh, Ankeny. Uh, in the, 
I'm, I was going to show a video, but I decided that uh, I have a way that's probably better of doing it. But in the video, I mentioned that uh, uh, during uh, that was shooting and finding a straight line uh, and shooting kind of center pretty well, uh, uh, these kind of shots. And it's for this type of thing right here. I, uh, like something like this looks kind of nifty. To me, this almost looks like a face, a big smiling face, cut the hair at the top. But if I wanted to like, spend the time, uh, Photoshop is kind of going to stop those on a straight road going all the way across. Um, here's, uh, here's actually my, our 2015 family portrait. Uh, so you have all kinds of fun with it. That's right. Here's uh, this year of uh, the Capitol. This here is, this is actually from just a single photo. Uh, Max is talking about the, uh, uh, I don't know if that's what he has on the back of his, uh, uh, his background or not, but uh, this one here was just from a single photo of this guy. Might've been his phone. This here I took with, uh, I took up in Detroit, standing up on the top of the hill. There's uh, Catherine from the club, uh, Mount Jefferson, I think. I can't remember the truth. I'm really bad with all the mountains. There's uh, some, some of my camera gear. Uh, my son, Alex, was with me. He was going to help me hide this stuff, but uh, or he was supposed to hide it. But oh well, I could have cloned it out, but made for an interesting story. Now, there is a step making these, and if you don't do that step, you can come up with a photo like this right here, uh, which is something I'd always wanted to do, and I finally got... Uh, you know, I finally had a good set of photos that um, I could do with a previous, with these ones right here, with those photos there, it made for a really good, uh, yeah, there we go. Um, and then this is the actual photo. Uh, I, will, I really wanted to do the process of actually going through three steps in Photoshop and Lightroom, but there's a lot of photos and a really big file, actually, and a really big process of hog. Uh, so we um, we would be here till tomorrow. So we're going to do a collection, uh, an overview. Uh, there are other methods to do this, and what I'm going to do: 360 degree cameras work really well. Uh, you can do them from a single photo to a smaller photo. Uh, I'm going to show here. We, I did a three, two 360-degree panoramics. I'll talk about this later in a little bit. Or you can um, uh, do a uh, uh, you can clone team uh, where you, you put the two ends of the photo have to come back together to make the tiny planet. We'll go over that later. Uh, you can clone the team out instead of doing another panorama to fix that team, which, again, we're going to go over here in a minute. Uh, why I do, but I, first I don't have a 360 degree camera. Um, and uh, I'm gonna use, I use, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go over why I use, uh, in this case, 24 millimeters instead of, uh, and, and make two panoramas instead of going uh, 12 millimeters and, uh, or instead of going ultra wide and doing a single panorama. Uh, I get much better details than, uh, uh, thing. I'll, again, I'll talk about that in a second. It just, this was because there was so much stuff I didn't want to get stuck up. And in Lightroom, we're going to go over making the main panorama and then making the panorama that doesn't connect the two ends together. I, I call that the scene panorama. And then uh, put the scene panorama and the main panorama together. And uh, that gets the final panorama. That's the one that we're going to take into Photoshop. Um, and uh, then uh, going to do our initial edit. And then in Photoshop, uh, we're going to create a dialect. Uh, 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 going to create a sky layer. If you saw that one, I was talking about a single photograph that had the, the sky going around in the bright purple. Um, it was, uh, uh, it was that kind of stuff. Uh, you're going to make it look like that kind of stuff. If you don't do that, uh, it's going to get really stretched out and weird on the edges and not look like a crop in the end uh, to get rid of it. And what I'm going to do here is 
way to avoid doing that. It may be a little bit more work, and I think, um, and uh, uh, which is going to be uh, the, the what I'm going to be doing is cleaning up that tall tree that's on there. Going to spend time getting rid of that tree uh, to help with the more information of the sky uh, in the Photoshop world. Create the tiny planet itself, and we're going to do all of our final edit. Uh, the gear. Okay, the gear is it showing up. Yeah. Not for you guys up there. <coughs> okay. All right, so just have a pod. Steady. Uh, normally, I would have this sitting straight up. Uh, uh, from my demonstration, I had to have a wide angle lens and I had to have my converter fitted on my Nikon camera, uh, my Nikon wireless camera. Uh, and with that, the, uh, uh, the mount, with the, it's like a telephoto uh, lens. You don't mount it to the camera, you mount it to the lens. Same here. That's the only reason why it's like this. Normally, it would be uh, this sitting up here. So, uh, you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. Normally, it would be like that. Um, and uh, uh, you have your uh, your pan uh, and locking knob right here. Uh, that allows you to uh, unlock it. So you can turn it around easily. And then we have our friction drag knob here. If you have that set correctly, you're able to turn your camera with its the lock. And it holds it in place. And that is actually uh, more convenient uh, uh, for uh, uh, doing this because you don't have to spend a lot of time and risk getting everything all uh, out of whack. Uh, it's it's just more convenient. Okay. Earlier, I said that I get I get flustered because of the uh, seizure auras. Auras, if you don't know um, feelings like you're gonna have a seizure as soon as you start. Uh, that I had a, a brain tumor from 1999. I've had many surgeries and uh, 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 I have problems. So sorry about that. Uh, that's why I haven't done one of these in a really long time. So now, and I have a hammock here because uh, I don't have hook. I don't have any weight in my hammock. Uh, this particular one is a Vanguard. Uh, uh, the model, if anybody's interested, is SB100. Um, Uh, weight, uh, uh, stability. Yeah, just throw some weight in there. I, I have a, about like a 10 pound rock. I use this in my backyard a lot for shooting astrophotography. Uh, it's a 10 pound rock. Just throw it down. It's uh, pretty handy. All right. Um, did I switch over? Did, okay. So. Gallery view. And I want to go back to so 
That's what I get for not uh, putting on my glasses before I came in. No contacts. Okay, so I shoot two panoramas. Let's focus. Um, I shoot uh, one going up in the sky, tilt down, and I shoot one you generally is the direction going around for the foreground. And uh, I, uh, when I do that, I uh, shoot, um, uh, like any panorama, I'll do uh, about a 20 degree um, uh, uh, overlap. overlap. Uh, not necessarily 20 degree every time, but say like there's the microphone right there, I'll maybe try to get it there the next time. Uh, that can come usually go that way. So uh, maybe something like that. Uh, this here is, uh, we're in a smaller room. Normally I would go with a feature a lot further away, but then I would say if I start here, take my three pictures, and I shoot in uh, a bracketing mode uh, because doing a 360 degree image, your uh, exposure is going to cha change drastically. So then after I take my initial image, turn, Okay, I went a little bit further than I normally would because, like I said, that right there should have been over a little bit further. And then I just keep going around until eventually I'm back where I started. And uh, I, I'm doing it this back and forth cable um, for the people that can't actually see what I'm doing. And then once I'm back where I started, tilt it up, but I still have my horizon line, let's say that's there, I'll bring that on the overlay, or overlaps about 20%. Um, so uh, there, and I'll do, again, it doesn't always work out, but I'll try to get roughly the same number of uh, uh, photos, uh, uh, sets of photos going around. Um, doesn't work out. Or if it's not the same number, that's fine. Um, if it is, if you do get the same number, that's the, the best. But uh, it doesn't have to be, as we'll find out. Uh, uh, this set that we're going to do is not the uh, uh, same number of uh, photos. Um, I think there's 10 more sets in uh, one of them. on the video is pretty bad. Is there something you might address? They really want to see me in focus? I don't know. Okay. So let's drag that down here. And in for everybody. All right, so. Got to share the screen again. All right, so did anybody have questions on that gear or anything so far? Did you see any questions out there, Rick? Uh, we're yeah. getting a lot of feedback on our cool. audio. Y'all are too afraid <coughs> to talk so far. He's like, he's not going to answer anything. All right, so then I bring him into uh, Lightroom and uh, uh, and I find um, where the two uh, uh, panoramas uh, start and finish, and uh, once they uh, figure that out, I like to uh, uh, label or give them different colors. Uh, here is the one that is the, uh, the, the sky panorama, uh, and here is the, uh, uh, the foreground panorama. Uh, the sky, I did green, the foreground, I did uh, yellow. Uh, no real reason for that. It's just pick two different colors. Um, and uh, once I did that, once I color coded them, I selected them all. Uh, right click, photo merge, HDR panorama, and then it's going to sit there. And generally, um, 
Uh, uh, there is one more thing I was going to do on here. I completely spaced it. That's fine, though. Um, generally, um, I really should have brought my glasses. Spherical. Generally, generally spherical works fine. Uh, most of the time, spherical works. Um, uh, if that, if not, then uh, uh, perspective. Perspective. Thank you. Uh, uh, then generally, if a spherical does work, perspective is the next uh, best option. Very rarely, by the way. Do I ever play this? <laughs> okay. So after doing it, done doing this stuff here, we're left with this, and we're going to have this uh, border here. You want to keep absolutely all, every, as much information as you possibly can. So we're not going to use auto crop, and uh, we're not going to. We're not going to add information that's not initially there, so we don't want to use uh, uh, fill, uh, fill edge. But we do have boundary. Warp. What boundary warp will do? It'll take all of this stuff here and it'll warp like the thing says, warp it to fill all of the white edge. So let's go ahead and take that up to 100, and we see that it's coming to fill all the edge here, and. Uh, Merge, obviously, on things because these are uh, supply chain. But those are things that take a really long time to sit there and do with merge. So now it's really time to get something to drink. And from Zoom, right? All right, so after that, uh, after it's done merging, you're ended, you end up with your uh, first and your initial one that I was talking about. That's what we're going to be like a three of them. Um, so, what we're going to do is keep a look over at uh, the edges because uh, we, we need to uh, make what I would call in, uh, the band, uh, the ring that for the steam, uh, the steam panel. So we need to connect this end and this end. So uh, we need to look at features on either side, uh, distinguishing features. So we're gonna, I've, I lifted the shadows of this uh, so I could see things uh, with more detail. And I have this right here, you guys can zoom, can't see this, this is a spot on the TV. Uh, this is not on the actual photo. Uh, we have, uh, 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 this valley thing here, we have these rocks. We want to look at the horizon when doing this. Uh, we have a valley and these rocks. We have the signpost, the uh, utility box. We're going to go look at the right hand side. We have the barn here, uh, more rocks. We have the trees, uh, formations in the trees here. Um, we have the van, but uh, not too worried about that. That's further in. Um, so then we come over here, and like I said, I shot in exposure bracketing. I shoot with in uh, three, uh, so I set it up to uh, six wide because this is basically one shot, another shot. Um, so uh, it just makes it easier to look through and see uh, uh, my shots. So what I want to do is find uh, features that uh, match up with what I saw in, uh, uh, on the edges of that initial panorama, such as the barn, rocks, and there's a, the little divot that works nice. There's a, a tree, and there's a little feature there. And here, again, there's the uh, divot. There's more of the rocks. Or the divot, I mean, the valley. And there's uh, post and utility. Uh, um, so these are on either end of the uh, uh, panorama. Uh, so here's the first. Uh, so on this one here, there's these three, and on this one here, those are those so six total. This group here is, I'm sorry, there's uh, nine total. This here is the one that's in the middle, with the barn right here. So this, the other panel, this one is for the sky, and this one here is for the foreground. You can see there's the barn, 
come down here and there's the utility box and the light post. So you want to get them so they kind of match up. Um, uh, this will be uh, recorded too if you want to rewatch it. Um, they, you want to get them in the bottom and the top kind of match up as you can get them. Uh, they, they won't be, may not get it perfect, but close enough, close enough is fine. That, that boundary warping we did earlier uh, will help fix that. Um, so then when you have them all selected uh, for the top and the bottom, uh, that ones that we just found, uh, you right, again, you right click, uh, uh, right click, photo merge, HDR program, uh, and this one here, uh, most of the time, uh, uh, spherical works, but I do find perspective have to go here more often than I do on any of the other. So I, I don't know if it's just because it's smaller or what, but I do have to come to the perspective more often on this particular one. I didn't in this case, but most, I do find I do the perspective a lot. And then again, uh, merge, I'm going to finish it there. Um, this, it actually came up pretty nice. Um, with the other, you want to try to get the horizon to line up fairly close to uh, what the horizon was in your initial pan panorama. And you got lucky, the, the horizon on the initial panorama was fairly straight. And this one here is also fairly straight. But we also have all this extra. Uh, uh, white, or we'd like to. I'd like to get all that filled up. But again, we don't want to get rid of any information. We don't want to add any, any extra information. Uh, but we can play this here if we need to. Uh, just uh, Max said that there's bad microphone feedback comes in and out. Do you have two microphones on? Said right now is good. Do you have a microphone? This one's not on. And my oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Max. Um. Uh. But uh. Yeah. The warp. Okay. So you can play with the warp here. Uh, the white on here is fine. If we can't, it will get rid of. And in the merging, if need be, but uh, uh, so playing with this is fine. But I'm, I was okay to go to 100% on this because the uh, the horizon was it did turn out pretty good. Sometimes I'll get them so that they'll start up here and come down to here. In that case, I would have to play with this until I get it. Play with the warp until it gets to something more reasonable. Um, but then merge it, and then once it's done, it, it'll take some time, but not as much time. Once it's done, we get this. If you see, there's the barn, there's the valley, there's the uh, utility box and the signpost. This is the theme, the junction between the two ends of the initial uh, um, uh, panorama that we made. Uh, hmm? okay. <laughs> um, um, uh, Doing this is, is to help help it so you don't we don't have to clone the edges together in a later step. The, late, the cloning is what is normally done, and I like doing it this way because it uh, um, I think it gives me a better end result. And it, like I said earlier, it is more work. Um, I, I brought the shadows up on here too. Uh, I I brought them up to 85. Uh, plus 85 on both of them, and that was just a number that worked for me. It's not a set in stone number. Uh, I'm going to merge these. Uh, so again, select them both. Uh, right click, uh, photo merge, uh, HDR panorama. Uh, this error, if it comes up, uh, I always use the HDR panorama. Uh, sometimes I get this error, uh, but not very often. Uh, if I use the uh, uh, the other one, I right click uh, uh, photo merge uh, uh, panorama. Uh, 
I, I get an error more often saying that it's an H, it needs to be emerged in HDR panorama. So I, I'll always go with uh, HDR panorama to begin with because this pops up so much less. So just a little, little thing to think about. Um, and then once it's done, uh, again, we have this, uh, uh, this edge here. Don't want to add crap. Don't, I'm sorry, don't want to add stuff. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, so we're not going to do that. We don't want to cr uh, crop stuff off. Um, so fill, and uh, we have uh, our, our, once we do the merge, we have our merged image here. We have a barn over here barn over here let's actually look at it we have a barn oh and with this merged if we go into develop settings the uh, the shadow will actually be at 85 so that's not a setting that's baked in we can change this um, uh, so we have a barn we have a valley we have uh, a utility box the utility box and the valley and stuff didn't uh, show up unfortunately but we do have the barn and we do have a barn. Uh, and you'll see the barn with the, uh, the tree uh, scoop out here and some trees. And if we look over here, we have the scoop and the barn. If you notice they're different colors, that's fine. Uh, because when you go over here to the edit, we're gonna, I'm gonna throw in a linear gradient and I'm gonna play with white balance and other things just to try to get them to match up some. Um, and I'm gonna do all any of my final editing. Yes, it's not a, photorealistic photo, uh, but the final result is obviously not something that you're going to see in nature. And if you do, please call me because I'm going to go see it. <laughs> um, but one thing, this bottom here, I did put a uh, linear uh, 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 gradient on there and uh, brought up the exposure. Uh, if you don't do that in the middle of your photo, it's going to be really dark. So now is the time to do that. Well, is it a hum or is it uh, like a double? I mean. <laughs> This is set to use uh, uh, that as a microphone. Excuse me. So um, uh, it's not even using the microphone for my laptop. Hmm? The lavalier goes through that. Um, and you, you said those were off. And you see, you, and did you say that was on? Nobody else is on this? Any other live microphones in here? Just this one. Showing that uh, everyone but uh, me is muted. So, all right. So I well, while you're looking at that, I'm going to continue here. So, um, like I said, I'm going to brighten this up here because otherwise it's going to be really dark in the final photo. Um, and uh, I don't remember how much I brightened it up, but it is quite a bit. Uh, that's excellent timing. Other than Max is saying, were there any questions? questions here. Oh my goodness. Is it any different? 
different. It's very clean now. So there's a, a live mic in somewhere in here. <laughs> All right, so now bringing it into Photoshop. <laughs> well, there is that annoying hum, but uh, I don't know if that's what he's hearing. Um, I don't know, my phone and everything is away. I don't know what he would be doing it. Um, all right, so in Photoshop, I'm gonna uh, duplicate the layer twice. Control J, Control J works pretty well for that. Uh, oh. Thank you, that's weird. Okay, so um, duplicate the layer, uh, control J, control J, or you can uh, take, well, un you have to unlock the background layer, and then you can drag it down to uh, this icon right down here, which is the new layer. Control J works much easier, much faster. Uh, uh, but uh, duplicate the layers. Um, name the top two layers sky name this layer the bottom layer tiny planet uh those that just helps um, um visually figure out stuff later on uh there we go sky tiny planet um oh uh go ahead and hide tiny planet because we don't need that one for, for right now uh do you guys know your blend modes in photoshop no okay so difference does, that, does everybody know what difference is? Okay, well, I'm hoping you guys know what difference is in zoom lens. Um, basically, any pixels that are the same will appear black. But uh, when you move them, they will, uh, depending on what the difference is, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact way of describing it. Uh, depending on how different they are, the, uh, uh, the colors here will be different. Um, what I did is I took this top sky layer, I set it to difference, and I held shift. Holding shift, you can drag left and, left and right or up and down. When you hold shift and do that, it only moves in that direction. Um, so you can't hold shift and kick it at a diagonal. Uh, it'll just keep it right on that plane, really nice for you. Excellent tool. Uh, always check out your modifiers and Lightroom and Photoshop. Try your modifiers, try them in combinations. Uh, they do all sorts of stuff. Um, so uh, I scooted it over until uh, like this top layer right here. Uh, this is the, this tree right here is the one I scooted over. But I wanted it so this I had as much of this sky covering this tree. Uh, and that's why I put it in difference mode so I can actually see uh, what's being covered here. And then I take a... Uh, uh, right. Did I miss a thing on the last one? Okay. Um, I put my notes in the wrong spot here. Okay, once I have it slid over, I'll add a mask to it uh, by clicking on the uh, mask button right there. If I hit uh, uh, Alt when I do it, it'll put a uh, black mask on there. And then I can put a, use a white brush and... Um, uh, paint in on the mask itself, I can paint in where I want the tree to disappear. And if anything weird starts showing up from the other layer, I can uh, hit X to switch 
to the background color from uh, black, uh, black and white, as long as these are set to black and white, I can quickly hit X to switch back and forth to uh, paint these, uh, paint, uh, and uh, uh, as long as I'm on the mask, you can see what my mask looks like right here. It will, uh, um, it's just erase. It doesn't need to be perfect. As this here is, it's gonna, this layer is gonna look really weird, uh, like really weird. Uh, so just, as you can see, that, that looks funky, but that's perfectly fine. Um, and then I have just these layers selected. Um, you, so do you guys know how the merging works, merging layers? These options right here? Okay, so for the people that don't, uh, if you flatten image, everything becomes one layer and it becomes a background layer. If you click on merge visible, if, so, if somewhere along the line, I uh, lost a screenshot and had to take a new one, so that's why this is visible with a different name. Um, if you uh, uh, merge visible, uh, if, if this was hidden, anything that was visible would become one layer and anything else would still be there. If you select layers, in this case, I just selected these two, and merge layers, come on, and merge layers, then just the layers you have selected will become a single layer, which is pretty handy. Uh, so select just the sky layers, and right click, merge layers. And then uh, we need to extend this out some. Uh, It'll make more sense here in a minute. We're gonna grab the crop tool and you're gonna get your crop lines going all around. Uh, you grab the one on this side here, drag it out, and if it starts to do uh, stuff where it wants to get uh, bigger and follow the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 what's it called, the uh, ratio, you can come up here where I didn't take a screenshot that actually had these, I'm really sorry about that but there'll be something that says, uh, you can click original and then come over here and click on clear. When you click clear, uh, you can then dra drag this side out uh, to wherever, however far out you want it. Where, where I have this here is a pretty good distance. Um, this is further than I need it, but it still gives me plenty of playroom. But remember that I'm dealing with, the, the further out you go, the bigger your uh, file is gonna be. I'm dealing with a pretty big file right here. This is why we're doing slideshow. Uh, so then I want to take my marquee tool, and you saw that uh, the tiny planet, there was the tree way up at the top. Okay, you got to decide when you're doing this what you want at the top. If I wanted the, uh, the building here to be at the top, yes, this is an outbuilding. Uh, if I wanted the, the building to be at the top, I would take the marquee tool, and uh, instead of bringing the right side of it, instead of bringing the right side of it over here along the tree, I would stop at the right side right along here at the outbuilding. So wherever I want the top of the, 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 the planet of the photo, I would bring the right side of the marquee from the left all the way to the right and put that there. And then after I do that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, select, save selection. Yeah, uh, select, save selection, and then I'm gonna give it a name. Um, selection was a good name. And then click okay. And uh, now I was up here on the tiny planet layer. Um, and, uh, I moved the tiny planet up uh, because uh, I was done with the sky. So I moved the tiny planet up and then uh, uh, I went, this time it's control shift J. Then control J duplicates the layer. When you have something selected, control shift J, whatever's selected gets cut out and thrown on its own layer. If you just control J while something's selected, that gets copied and put on its own layer. So in this case, I did control shift J and it put it on its own layer, but now the selection is gone and I want that selection back. So uh, select load selection and then I click on channel and then I click on selection. And there are other ways to do this. This is just one of the quicker ones that I think. So then I click OK, 
and uh, then I have the selection again, and you don't see it here, didn't take a screenshot, but uh, again, control shift J, it uh, cuts that part out, puts it on its own layer there. And so now I have, I'm gonna rename these uh, Sky 2 and Planet 2, uh, uh, just so I know what they are. Uh, uh, and then I'm gonna hide the, uh, the Sky layer because again, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna, we're gonna use difference again. And uh, uh, I don't want the sky layer affecting anything like this. I need to move them both. I don't want to have that affect anything uh, when I'm using the different mode. So I'm gonna hide the sky uh, layer and on the, the planet two layer up at the very top, I'm gonna put that one on difference and I'm gonna select both uh, uh, sky and planet two and then holding shift, again, shift, uh, I'm gonna click and I'm gonna start dragging them to the right. And using, I'm gonna zoom, move them to the right thumb and then I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna try to align up features as best as I can. They don't need to be perfect, but just try to align them up. This is why I did uh, a difference because it really allows me to see these uh, features pretty well. Uh, barn, uh, sign, uh, sign, yeah, um, and some uh, trees, and even some of the foreground features. This here really isn't that important. It was just something that was a little bit noticeable to help alignment. Um, doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, so then we come over to here. We can see here that uh, there is still a scene, but fine. Uh, we have, we're gonna add a mask onto the uh, uh, the planet two layer. Before we go any further, what time? Um, on the next one that I have for questions here, do people wanna take a bath and break? I'll figure it out when we get there. Okay, so, and uh, we ha I have a mask only on, for right now, only on the, uh, um, the, uh, uh, planet two and I have uh, both the sky layers hit um, and uh, that'll become evident why here in a minute. Uh, so then I'm gonna zoom in some so I can see better. I'm gonna grab my gradient tool and I want black in the foreground. You can quickly get to your default colors by hitting on your brush or when you're, uh, for any tool, you just hit uh, D. Uh, that'll put uh, white up front, black in the back. And again, X will swap out the color doesn't matter what colors you have, X swap them, but uh, D gives you the default colors. Um, and then I have the gradient selected. Uh, I have, so there's the foreground, the background like that. Um, and then again, again, I'm gonna use shift. I'm gonna click at the beginning here, I hold shift and I'm gonna just drag to the right. Uh, yeah, drag to the right. Um, and screenshots. I'm really sorry about the screenshots. I promise you that it worked out. Just when I went back to take to try to fix the screenshots, it uh, came up. Okay, so uh, drag to the right and because when you drag to the right, uh, it's going to create a mask that has a uh, uh, a, a gradient right there where the, uh, um, the hard line was. And then you can fix any stuff that's uh, odd with a uh, brush. You can uh, take your, uh, your uh, brush, soften it up. Uh, uh, might be a good idea to bring the opacity down, uh, black. And then like in here, I came in, and just played around with it some. And then you can add on your uh, sky, on your other, uh, layer, uh, make them visible again. And the reason we uh, hit them earlier is because with the gradient that the sky was showing, um, you wouldn't see the proper gradient because we didn't have a mask on that. You would still see the hard line right there. So we wanted to get rid of those being visible. So we uh, 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 made the sky layers visible again. And then holding um, Control and Alt, 
uh, click on the uh, click on the mask for uh, the uh, if you want to copy a mask from one layer to another, you can do it by holding Control Alt and dragging it to the next layer, uh, or dragging it to the other layer that you want, uh, and that copies. So that mask is now copied over to the uh, sky layer. So now the sky layer also has that same mask, also has that same gradient, and with it. Uh, with it, uh, with it visible, now you don't see any hard uh, 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 line like this in the sky either. Uh, so that got rid of that seam right there. So if we, we want to do one at a time, we want to uh, merge the planet layers. So let's select those two, right click, merge layers, and then do the same for the sky. Uh, right, uh, select the two sky layers, right click, merge layers and then uh, now we have these when we stretched out the, uh, the um, portions of the crop uh, we had these this big area here that's um, um, there, there's no information there it's uh, um, uh, transparent uh, so we, we go to image rather than cropping it down manually we can go to image trim transparent pixels click OK and that'll automatically chop off all of that stuff for us. Now, if we look here, we have a tree and the other half of the tree. And that seam that was there is no longer there. So uh, that the whole point of making that other panorama is to cover up where that seam was. Uh, so now, what, uh, now we, we go, I go to, uh, image i'm sorry uh, uh size image yeah. image image size and uh then i want to i'm resizing it to a square so i need to uncheck this little link right here and uh then uh, this was actually this was actually uh bigger than uh uh 5,500 pixels tall. This was way bigger than that wide, way bigger. Um, but we needed a square, so I'm going to put it at uh, uh, same dimensions, 55. But I want to make it smaller, just so my computer doesn't you know, hate me. Uh, click OK, and uh, now I need to flip it upside down. The uh, the part where we had the image, so you looked like you was looking out of a hole rather than a tiny planet. If we don't do this step here, that's how you get it so you're looking at a hole. If you don't flip it upside down. Flipping it upside down makes it look, turn it into a tiny planet. So it's uh, image, image rotation, 180 degrees. And you have to do that for, uh, I can't remember if you have to do that for each layer or not. It's one of these steps you have to do for each layer, and it might be that one. I know this one you definitely have to do for each layer. Okay, so now is the part where we're making the things look like the tiny planet. So we're going to uh, go to, uh, after we've turned it upside down, we're going to go to uh, filter, uh, filter, um, Filter, filter distort polar coordinates. Um, and uh, then you're going to get this here. And uh, you need to do that to both of the layers here, the sky and the, uh, the planet layer. Does anybody need to use that? Well, we've been uh, doing this technical stuff for an hour now. So. OK. Um, so now the sky layer, we, I'm going to convert that to a uh, smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. This is for late, stuff later on that we're doing this. Um, but you see this stuff right here, how these are all smeared out. 
instead it's not that easy to see on the screen here um, uh, but these lines it's we have the clouds the planet and the clouds but here instead of nice clouds we have all these streaks going out okay that's why we made the uh, extra sky layer is to help fix this here uh, so um, we're going to be doing some transforming and warping and such. So uh, we have the sky layer. We're going to hide the planet layer. Uh, so all we see is the sky layer. And transform uh, with this, when we hide the planet layer, we make sure that we have the sky selected. But it's a smart object. So anything that we, when it's a smart object, anything we do to it, we can come back and undo to it or change later. That's why we're making it a smart object. Uh, so I want to transform control T and then I want to make it a little bit bigger to help hide some of this stuff to do that um, if you hold shift alt and they have a few versions ago they changed this around um, you used to I think just have to hold alt I can't remember anymore but now you hold shift alt and you grab one of these corner ones and you uh, drag it out and it, it, uh, when you do it that way, it makes it uh, expand from this center point right here rather than at the opposite corner point. So shift alt and uh, drag it out and it will uh, uh, expand from that. And I don't want to get it too much bigger, just enough to help to, to give it a little kick of the head. Now I right click, I'm sure that's actually right click, right click and click on warp. That's going to give you this grid here. And then I can start taking these little points and dragging them in. Take these points and dragging them out. And these points and dragging them wherever. You just really play with it. Like I said, it's going to get really funky. Um, so I want to make this, this is the sky layer. I want to make this smaller. Because this, I don't want this to be seen. But I want the sky to be fully filled up. And that's the whole point of the sky layer. I, it, I think this makes it look so much better when, when this extra, these extra steps are done. Um, so after you get here, after you get this done, uh, and yes. Yeah. And the reason we did it, uh, the, the reason I did it, do it as a smart object before I get to this point is if later on I find out that something here is still showing up as uh, um, uh, still uh, is showing up behind my mask that I, that I make later on I can come back in uh, uh, and transform and all this will still be here it won't be a new image that I have to retransform I can transform these from all these handles here so smart objects is a really powerful uh, tool to use um, so uh, w once I apply it, you, you can apply it by either clicking this check mark or hitting enter on your keyboard. Uh, and then uh, once I get to there, I'm going to go ahead and um, make the, plan the planet layer visible again. And uh, that, uh, that other planet, that, that uh, one we were just working on, is actually really small back here. And as you can see, that tree right here that we spent all that time working on. Oh, fill time, sorry. Um, wrong way. That tree that we spent all that time working on is not visible. We, the reason we spent all that time with the uh, moving it and uh, painting it out is because otherwise uh, doing all that warping, it would still, that tree would still be sticking up about here somewhere. Um, right. So uh, it's just to, to help it along. Um, so then what I, I need to, because the planet layer is on top, I need to view the sky because uh, the sky is totally hidden. You don't see any of it. All you see is this other stuff here. So I want to take my lasso tool and I want to create a selection around the planet and I want to include some of the original sky. And then I'm going to go to uh, 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 select feather, and then 200 pixels is a pretty good uh, uh, radius I found. 
and go to click OK. And then if you click on, when you have your, uh, uh, your selection done, if, uh, when you hit the mask button, uh, whatever you have selected will stay visible and what is not selected will be hidden. If you were to hold Alt when you did that, the opposite would happen. So uh, uh, at this point, um, my uh, things are out of order. OK, so I have the sky layer. I'm going to go to uh, filter, camera raw, filter. Remember, this is still a uh, um, a uh, smart object. So anything I do with this camera raw filter, I can undo. Uh, and it's warped. So that's why uh, the layer's warped. That's why this, this looks all weird. So what I'm, I want to do is, this is a fun image. I'm just going to have some fun with it. Uh, I'm going to, I generally like to really crank up the, uh, the white balance, uh, either warm or cool. Uh, just depending on how the photo feels to me that day. Uh, and then uh, bring the, I, I generally bring down the highlights that really make the cl cloud stand out. And uh, same with the blacks and the whites to add a lot of contrast. Um, uh, and then once I get to something that I think looks good, I then get my mouse up to the correct screen and click OK. And then... Uh, However it pops up on here, if I think it needs more, uh, I can go back onto the, uh, the layer here, and I can double click uh, where it says camera raw uh, filter, and this screen will pop back up again, and I can come back and do any edits that I want to do, any changes, again, because it's a smart object. And uh, then I can, what I then do is I double click on, even though I did that radius on the, uh, um, uh, the, the the feather on the um, the selection, I double click on the mask here, and this feather, I play with it even more, and that will feather the mask even more, and when you do that, you can see how it'll change in here, and right now, it's it's actually, you can't really tell, but it's, it's kind of over here. There's a haze that's just barely over the planet here, uh, just barely, so you don't really see that anything. Um, and then what I like to do is a custom vignette. Uh, I have an action that I made for it. Uh, make a uh, new layer, uh, make a selection, and then I, I'll play my action. But to, uh, to actually do the, uh, um, uh, the vignette, it's uh, uh, make the selection, um, Select, modify, feather. Uh, I do on these. I do usually about 250. Uh, and then you can stamp a visible layer, um, and then Alt Mask to create the mask uh, uh, with uh, with the selection hidden. Uh, so all this stuff uh, will be hidden uh, in the vignette. Um, Then the blend mode, I, t I turn to multiply, and uh, and then uh, just do any fine tuning with opacity. But uh, I get from here to here by adding my custom vignette, um, uh, rather than using a uh, uh, um, like in camera raw, rather than using an actual vignette. Um, I can generally I'll do this uh, a couple of times. And I just squiggle around with my uh, um, uh, with my lasso until I get something that I like, um, and then uh, I'll do any. I'll, I like to throw curves on top of pretty much all of my photos, uh, just as a final step to tie everything together, uh, and uh, generally unless I'm wanting to add a lot of contrast, it's just a slight curve. And I also bump up this, the blacks, or the shadows way down here at the bottom. It just gives it a nice little haze to it. It's just the look I like. Um, and then come through and do any final edits on, uh, um, 
on uh, uh, mass uh, opacity or masks. Um, um, if you can see here, I did a little bit of uh, brush work on the mask, and uh, sometimes in, on the vignette I'll do brush work, and then um, I may uh, just do any final editing. And then when you go to save it, this message pops up all, fairly often. Um, you can go ahead and click on the uh, OK and save it in this uh, format. Oftentimes, what I'll do is come back to here. And if I think I'm finally happy with here, I'm not going to make any more changes, I will uh, uh, right click rasterize layer and uh, maybe even flatten the image. Normally I don't flatten the image, but I real, will rasterize this layer. And um, any masks I don't think I'm gonna use anymore, I'll apply those. Um, I generally don't like do, applying the masks because that's something I can't undo, but uh, uh, rasterizing this layer to make it uh, smaller to the overall file size smaller I'll do. Um, and, uh, and once I save it, uh, goes back in the Lightroom, um, and yeah, and this, I can get my mouse to work proper. This is why I use. 24 millimeters rather than going with 12 millimeters. If I were to go with 12 millimeters, everything here would be really far, really distant. If I were to do like a 12 millimeters ultra wide and just take a single panel that got the sky and the foreground, um, everything here would look really distant and uh, really small and there wouldn't be any of this kind of detail here. Um, but going with two panoramas, I have a, a lot more detail here. Yes, the uh, the sun is setting over the crapper. Um, uh, but I have a, a lot more uh, detail here by doing the two panoramas. And uh, like this kind of stuff here, you may want to uh, uh, use your uh, uh, clone tool to fix or uh, do whatever your fancy is. But uh, uh, yeah, final image right there. Any questions? I spent I spent more uh, I I worked on it over a period of two days, but that was be not not yeah not sitting there at my computer for two days. I uh, came back to it, but I, I spent more than this obviously. Uh, hmm? Multiple hours. Um, uh, which is another reason why I uh, wasn't going to do the whole thing. But, uh, I plan on doing the uh, mix between uh, uh, screenshots and uh, 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 actual uh, work on it, but it was uh, it was really chugging along. I got pictures. I'm not feeling that great. Like I said, I have a seizure disorder. And that's what I just did was take some uh, the pills out of my, uh, when I just took a pill there, it's because I wasn't feeling that good. Anybody have any questions? Any more questions, I should say? <laughs> yeah. Hopefully the audio works in the video. Yeah, the, the chats are recorded.
of these you guys want to see? Now, Catherine is down here. Yeah. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, ring. Oh, yeah, this one. He, this one here was a single image that I had to. Uh, uh, I didn't do a. Um, uh, this I didn't do the C uh, channel for. Uh, I did a, a cloning. I, uh, I brought it in and I flipped it upside down. So I made it into a square. I flipped it upside down and uh, uh, I did the polar coordinates and. Uh, uh, brought it into Photoshop, I extended the side out, and I did that same thing where I uh, brought one side over to the other, and then instead of overlapping it, I uh, used a, uh, uh, I put a new layer over the top of it, and then used a clone tool, a clone stamp tool, and uh, put various other tools to uh, uh, fix the seam. I don't remember exactly where the seam is. I think it's in here somewhere. I think. I'm not exactly sure, but um, I uh, put it together and uh, um, uh, flipped it upside down and then uh, did the polar coordinates and I was able to get a, a single image like this. And then the sky here was uh, actually from, um, uh, I, I did an image and I did a sky replacement from uh, Photoshop and I uh, used that and I just uh, took it and I uh, put it four, four times around and uh, just uh, made that a smart object and really pushed the colors on it. And this one here, I actually, uh, I did two versions of this. But this particular one, I uh, on the, the panorama mode on my phone, I uh, took that and uh, I had to take, uh, I think I had to take three of them uh, just took the panorama and uh, just took three of them kind of facing the foreground and I turned it up did three more however many I needed to do uh, and uh, then uh, on the computer I put this together like this like right there is actually my tripod and camera so yeah this one and uh, Catherine is I think that's Catherine right there and that's her band Well, thank you for coming, everybody. Do what? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mara. Yeah, um, uh, take the photos and uh, post them up in the uh, 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 on the uh, the meetup page. There's uh, the, the comment section for the uh, for the photo section for this meetup. Uh, that'd be cool to see what you guys can do. Uh, there's even the um, Weekly favorites coming up here. Post them up. Thanks, Max. Sorry about the sound issue.
happy day. Hi, Max. Howdy. How are you doing? I'm doing real fine. When's your next outing? Well, we don't have one scheduled right now. The last one was last weekend down at Wallace Marine Park. But we'll get another one going here pretty quick. Okay. I think this uh, tiny planet is uh, that shoot. Pardon me? The one in your background, the tiny planet, is it from that shoot? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I see that. <laughs> I was thinking about going back down to the uh, Saturday market again. It's an easy place to shoot people. And mm -hmm. uh, watch how you phrase that now. <laughs> but yeah. And that's open too. And that's not far from where I live. Yeah, it's, it's a good stop. Doesn't take too long. You can see who's there. But it's a, it's a fun place because people are doing things rather than just, you know, standing around. Uh, They're interacting with one another and interacting with the vendors. So you can get some interesting things. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I went to one that either Rick Clark, or I think it was actually Eric that hosted it some time back. Yeah, he did a good job. He gave a little talk on how to do street photography, and then we went down and shot people. I, I tend not to do street photography the way that he recommends. Uh, he recommends like a 35 millimeter lens and a quite a bit more interaction with the subjects. And I tend mm -hmm. to shoot a longer lens and more or less snipe. That's more fun for me. Yeah. Another thing, uh, the rhododendrons are blooming, at least starting to bloom. And uh, one of the best places in town to shoot rhododendrons is uh, Bellcrest Cemetery. And I don't think I'm going to set that up as a formal shoot, but if you want to get out and uh, and check it out, well, Bellcrest is in South Salem. Okay. Make note of that. Yeah, we have some rotted engines in front of the house that are, oh, they're old. They've been a good addition to the house because they keep cars from running into it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to do a night shoot downtown uh, before long, too, but... I wanted the weather to be a little nicer than it's been. Uh, it won't be a lot of fun if it's raining and blowing. And mm -hmm. right now things are not really predictable yet. Yeah.
when we had the shoot at uh, Ankeny, I went down the rail trail and uh, it was pretty good uh, and pretty easy, but there were a number of things to see. I can recommend that outing too. Okay. Now you talk on the boardwalk or are you talking continuing past the boardwalk? Well, it's, you know where uh, Pintel Marsh is? Mm -hmm. it's, it's down the road a little on the other side of the road. Right. Uh, you walk in a grassy path for, I don't know, a couple hundred yards, and then you turn to the right onto this uh, boardwalk. Okay. And, and the whole thing was good. Uh, a person just needs to slow down and keep a bright eye out and and you'll see lots of things so many people go through there you know quickly and they're talking and they don't see half of what there's there to observe you know i was down at minto today and, and saw a deer i'll bet oh. nobody else saw that deer but i was going slow and watching the brush of course the deer saw me a long time before i saw it yeah They have a knack for that. I think they go to school. Huh. Hey, everybody. Um, can you guys hear me uh, out there on Zoom?